From time to time, I'm going to be doing some questions and answers based on, uh, first of all, user comments uh, from various videos, and secondly, from things that people write and email me. You would be surprised how many people will email me comments or questions that they won't post either in the forums or on the channel. So here we go with some OMAD question and answers. Uh, this is from uh, a guy who wishes to remain anonymous, and he says, Why am I weak and shaky doing OMAD? Well, that depends, but the answer is probably that you haven't done it for very long and your body hasn't switched over to start using what is in you rather than what's, uh, rather than what's on you instead of what's in you. What you want is for your body to transform, start using the liver, and start pulling off the reserves, that you, the fat storage that you have uh, inside you. Now, if you are new to OMAD, that's one possibility. If you are another is that you are not faithful to it. So if you are going a month on OMAD and then maybe jumping off for one or two and then coming back to it, obviously it's going to be hard all over again. Weak, shaky, headache, all of those are blood sugar signs that you haven't transitioned. Your body hasn't gotten the message that it needs to start using its own reserves. And the reason it doesn't is because you haven't told it to do so. You haven't put it back into fasting mode. If you'll do that you'll and be consistent with it, you're going to find that it's probably better than, than otherwise. Now, having said that, there are, if you are hypoglycemic uh, and you have other problems, you, you're, it's going to take a little bit longer. So assuming you are doing it faithfully and you're having a little bit of a, more, a stricter adjustment, some people do, some people take longer to adjust, but uh, within, give it two weeks, in your case, sir, and you're going to find that it, it'll be a lot, lot easier once you get to doing it. Because one way or another, your body's going to adapt. Second question for this episode, why don't I speak more about calories? This is what someone asked in one of the comments. I do actually address calories, and I, but I, I like to deal in defaults. I don't like to talk about just one thing because that cripples you to one thing. For instance, if I were to bring out... Uh, some some item that supposedly did something or a pill that did something, then that traps you to that. It's just like the Weight Watchers and all these other plans where they say, here's what uh, here's what you need to be on the program. Well, then if you stop investing in it, it's no good. The purpose of intermittent fasting is that you can do this regardless of your lifestyle, regardless of your finances, regardless of whether you prefer carb or protein or your, whatever your food choices are. The whole point is the universality of this. And that's one of the things that people are drawn to. The reason I don't speak more about calories, though, is because that makes you a slave cal a calorie counter. There's nothing wrong with counting calories. Some people should who have particular medical issues and they don't lose as easily. They need to track because sometimes even smaller portions can be too much for certain metabolisms. It is not the case that if you are under 1,200 calories, you're automatically eating too little. It depends on your 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 sex, your weight, your, your body type, all of those things for certain people with certain medical conditions, you may need more or less calories. Just like it is possible on my fitness pal to be told you need X amount of calories a day and to not need that, even though you fit the parameters. So with calorie counting, you can do calorie counting, no problem. You can do calorie counting and just eat small portions. If calories are what you're worried about, by all means, count calories. But the OMAD solution is a better solution because it corrects your, it, it is fasting, it corrects your imbalances and it puts you back in touch with yourself. Which is why on my latest video, or one of my recent videos about ma maintenance, the whole point of maintenance is to put you back in touch with your instincts so that you're not count, counting calories. You can go your whole life and count calories. That's not real progress. That's not real a real solution. You can sit there and say, I had 1,200 today, I had 1,100. Do that if that helps you. Nothing wrong with it, but you shouldn't have to live like that forever. So that's my point. And finally today, number three, what is wrong with low-carb OMAD? There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's, it's a totally good way to go if you do low-carb. Some people have come away with negative sentiments from me about low-carb because I've told them I, I think it's a terrible idea. But the reason I say that is because of my own experiences. I tried Adkins back in the mid-90s uh, when I first hit 295, 250 pounds. Uh, and not only did I not lose weight, not only did I feel terrible, I mean just awful, not only did I, was I lethargic and ongoingly miserable, and I kept splurging because I would have to go out and get a whole bunch of sugar 
And he, not only was it all of that, but my breath smelled like a garbage scowl. It was honestly terrible. I never adapted. My body screamed, this isn't right, this isn't right. It was one of those things that you're not going to argue with your body on certain levels. So that's why I don't. But however, there are tons of people who do an OMAD-ish meal. I guess we should distinguish here between uh, like Atkins and Paleo versus carb conscious. Carb conscious basically says that if you're going to go out and have your meal that day, you don't want to have a shake and fries and a bunch of candy bars for your meal. You would rather have maybe a normal hamburger or french fries and then maybe a piece of fruit or something. That's being smart. That's being conscious of how much you're eating because common sense says if you dose yourself with a bunch of sugar for your meal, you're going to be miserable later. And that's why I tell people, uh, don't go overboard in eating, or we, in eating junk food because you're going to build up, you're going to, you're going to develop a hypoglycemic reaction and then you're going to be, your body's going to be getting used to you always eating sugar and you're going to constantly, you'll still lose weight, but you'll constantly be producing boatloads of insulin. And then when you don't do that, when a day comes, you eat a more protein based meal or you eat less then you're going to still have that flood of insulin and you're going to feel like you have the flu. You ever notice those leg aches that people get when you ever been felt like you have the flu but you didn't have the flu, but you felt bad after you ate? That's from an excess of insulin. Your body's having to go into resistance mode because it's getting too much and it can't let all of that into your cells. So your, your body has to form a natural block. It, and all of this happens, of course, without you thinking about it. So... That's, that's about it for today. Ask your questions, submit them, and uh, I'll go over them because it's possible to have videos on all of these points and to hit around and miss the exact question you had. So we'll see you next time.